industry for a long time and um, had developed their craft, developed their skills. Um, I mean, a number of them were frustrated. Tom was one, I think, who was who was pretty frustrated at what he what he had to do. Um, but fascinating characters who might not necessarily be great artists, but and I just found that you know, invigorating. Did you think of yourself as as sort of rewriting or writing the history as you were going by compiling these interviews? Because it's one thing that you know, struck me about your work is, I mean, as an interviewer and also as the editor, is that such a you're such a prolific interviewer. But it was was <laughs> we're, we're working on that. Um, but it doesn't seem like you've ever had the urge to like do a big history of comics or. No, I didn't think that way. I mean, I, yes. I approach what, what, I approach every interview difference? as kind of an isolated thing. I mean, you know, I, I started interviewing people. Um, I guess I didn't do the research that I did later on. I mean, la later on, I would I would do a lot of research when I interviewed an artist. I would read everything he ever did. I read I read about him. The first um, I don't know five or six years or so, I would interview an artist with a more cursory knowledge of the work and just try to get as much out of them uh, out of them as I could. But I, n I never um, I never thought of it as some sort of an overarching project. To um, I think you know the, I mean the problem is you're li you're you're living it day to day, and I mean I'm doing a million other things. Um, and squeezing in, you know, writing something on the side, or interviewing somebody, and doing a little bit of research, and um, you know, you take each 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 piece as it comes, and you just don't think. And I didn't think in those terms. No. Were there any interviews that didn't go very well, in your opinion? Um, well, I'm sure there were, but I'm sure I blocked those from from memory. I remember the I mean I remember the good interviews. There there were a number of people I interviewed in the '80s that I. I I couldn't even believe I interviewed that I, I was uh, that, you know going through. Um, we're putting all the the comics journals. Um, we're archiving the entire history of the comics journal on the website eventually, and I've been going through some old issues. Um, or just uh, you know in the course of the um, of the day in the office uh, when I see issues lying around being scanned or or, or images being um, scanned out of them, I'll, I'll look through them. And there were a number of artists that. I'm just surprised I interviewed. Like who? <laughs> well, like Tim Truman. I mean, I don't, I don't understand the context of, of how I did that. Uh, I mean, I have, I have nothing against him, but I'm not sure how that came about. Is there anybody that you have tried to get and have never gotten? Yeah, Gary Trudeau, Steve Ditko. Oh, that would be it. That'd be a great interview. Yeah. Well, it might be less great than we think, but it would be. Um, It'd be amazing if doing, you could do it. Um, um, I can't think. Actually, I can't think of anyone else. Those two. I mean, Dick Dicko Dick is a ones. perennial, you know, yeah. refuse Nick. Do you still talk with him? No. 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 We 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 published. Um, that biographical coffee table book, um, mm -hmm. a career retrospective of his, and got it. Uh, yeah, good book. Yeah, it yeah. was a great book. Yeah, and uh, but Steve didn't think so. Oh, yeah. He was um, very much opposed to its being published. Uh. Yeah, I had I, I had a last very final phone conversation with him. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. No more conversations mm -hmm. with Steve. Um, Another pitfall of being a publisher. Right, <laughs> it's true. Um, I think we should open up to questions now. Uh, are there any questions? Yeah, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about the like, foreign perspective. Like, at least by the time I was aware of the Comics Journal, it did cover some international work and probably paid more attention to the world of comics than a lot of American things did and still do. Right, right. Um, well, you know, we, I mean, we gradually started covering foreign um, foreign comics. I remember going over to Angoulême and uh, writing a piece about, I don't know, the foreign um, situation as best I can, but I don't speak the language. Um, my partner, Kim Thompson, who's multilingual and grew up in France and grew up reading um, European comics, is much more knowledgeable, and um, he's written about European comics in the magazine. Um, we, you know, we were writing about comics like Asterix and Tintin in the in the 70s, as I recall. 
late 70s maybe. So we were try we, we always tried to broaden our coverage of comics. I mean originally we started out covering mostly comic books and then we expanded European comics, we expanded to gag cartoons, we expanded to political cartoonists and newspaper strips and eventually you know eventually we wanted the magazine to be about every branch of cartooning. And that probably took us a while. Um, but we included, you know, European cartoonists in there and, and covered them as best we could. I mean, you know, throughout the 80s, there was virtually no European translations done over here. I mean, now there's considerably more. So it was really difficult to cover them because there weren't any English language versions of those comics. Another question? Any, uh, anyone have a single question? <clears throat> If you guys could just talk about some titles and artists that you're really excited about that are coming out right now, things that people should look out for. Okay. 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 <laughs> well, <laughs> most of the good new comics I've been seeing lately seem to be in that fanzine mine shaft, and there's uh, some of the newcomers I really like are Ed Piscor, who came out of Harvey Picar, illustrating for Harvey Picar, and another one, Joseph Remnant, who is at this time posthumously illustrating Harvey Picar's History of Cleveland. And then there's a Canadian artist named Nina Bunjevac, who also has a really beautiful style. And in the latest Mineshaft, there's a little strip she d d does about the death of her father called 1976 that I think is really moving. So there's three of them. Um, boy, you know, we publish a lot of um, younger cartoonists in MoM that I like. Um, I like, um, I think Laura Parks is doing great work. I think Nate Neal. Um, we just published a graphic novel by him. Um, the Sanctuary, which I think is very good. Um, Derek Van Giesen, um, Dash Shaw. I think, you know, I think there are a lot of um, younger cartoonists who are doing terrifically vital work. Um, right now, I'm, I'm, I'm buried in, in publishing, in, in, in focusing on projects that are um, more archival in nature. We're doing uh, Floyd Godforson's Mickey Mouse and Carl Barks's um, Donald Duck and Uncle Scrooge work, which I'm, I'm knee deep in right now, um, editing and putting together. I recommend the Chester Brown book that's about to come out. Tim, just do we have an choice. interview with uh, Chester Brown coming up on the website? We sure do. Don't oh. worry. Yeah, <laughs> we got to cover. That'll be a, that could be a fascinating interview. Yeah. Is there any chance of uh, Nemo and Amazing Heroes also being online? The archives of those publications. Sure, there's a chance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. Um, you know, I think I spoke to Rick Marshall um, not too long ago about trying to figure out how to put Nemo um, maybe onto a CD-ROM or so something like that. Nemo magazine, for those of you who don't know, and I assume that's virtually all of you, um, was a magazine about newspaper strips edited by Rick Marshall, who's one of the great newspaper strip historians. Um, started in 1981, I think, and um, I think it ended around 1989 or 1990. Uh, we published 31 issues, and it was a fabulous magazine covering the history of newspaper strips. Um, it was just an amazing archive of, of great newspaper strips. Thanks for bringing that up. I mean, that was, that was again, one of our attempts to, to do something, you know, to get outside of comic books and to cover the, the entire art form. One more question. Uh, could you get into more about what would Steve Ditko's objection to that book, and why hasn't Ditko hardly done anything in the past 30 years or so? Well, I'm not entirely sure what Ditko's objection to the book was, because the phone call didn't last long enough for him to explicate that. Um, as I recall, uh, he called me a parasite and hung up. Um, I think he just had fundamental objections to any book being published about him. Um, I'm not sure I understand that, but, um, and why, well, you know, he's done a lot of uh, small press books that um, are, are either self-published or published by a friend of his, um, and they're 
political or ideological or philosophical in nature. Um, very pared down drawing that are, that's meant to convey his ideas, his um, ideas which are mostly distilled from Ayn Rand. And he's done that, but they're very obscure, and, and I assume that you just have to order them by mail, and they're not available otherwise. And that's all I know that he's done. Um, I mean, Steve is probably around 80 or 82, so he could be semi-retired. I heard he shreds his originals. I've heard that, too, and I think I asked him about that and he refused to answer. Oh, he does. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Draw your own conclusions. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> okay, I think, uh, unless there's, is there one more? Oh, there's another. I'd like to hear about, you get the last question. Like you want to hear about my catch? About the new comic online. Like right, of course. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who's going to take this one? I think that's yours. Oh. Um, let's see. Uh, Gary emailed me. Um, <laughs> Tim and I. Faithful uh, email. Yeah. Tim and I uh, did a magazine called Comics Comics for a bunch of you. I think the first one was 2006. Yeah, about five years. About five years. Uh, and it kind of morphed into a pretty steady uh, online magazine with a bunch of different contributors, um, including Frank Santoro and. Dash Shaw, and Nicole Rudick, and Jeet Heer, um, uh, Joe McCullough. And um, I guess Gary had heard a story that I, that I was drunkenly boasting that we could take over the <laughs> Comics <laughs> Journal, which I, I swear is not true, actually. You mean you uh, don't remember it? No, no, no. <laughs> I, I actually know it's not true, because uh -huh. uh, my our We know who made it up. We know who made it up. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> who confessed to making it up later. Um, and so Gary emailed me and said, uh, you know, I heard you've been drunkenly boasting about taking over the Comics Journal. Well, well, well it's yours. Um, <laughs> and um, so I... Uh, the stipulation was that they remain drunk while editing. <laughs> <laughs> We're drunk right now. Yeah. So far, so good. Don't mind us. Um, and so, uh, we, you know, me and Tim talked about it a lot and decided... We'd both been really influenced by the magazine. Uh, uh, me in particular, I, it, it sort of, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, really informed my own critical sensibilities a lot. Uh, first picked it up when I was, you know, an early teenager. Um, and so the new version of it is, I mean, Gary continues to publish uh, the print version. Uh, it's going to be an annual, uh, a very thick annual. And Tim and I, are attempting to do a full-fledged online magazine about comics, kind of carrying on th the tradition of interviewing uh, young cartoonists, old cartoonists, dead cartoonists. Um, That's a trick. If we can do it, <laughs> which we're working on. Got the Ouija board out. Yep, and uh, running reviews and, and long-form prose pieces, and trying to sort of bring the journal back to a place where it becomes more a part of the cultural conversation uh, and make it a part of just, besides just more central in comics, but central in, in visual culture in general. Um, and so it's it's updated every day. <laughs> yeah, no, that's a good point. Amazingly enough, yeah. one of us manages to update it every day. Several of the interviews that have been discussed tonight are online now. Yeah, uh, that's the other thing. We're, as part of the project, I mean, one of the things we wanted to do was the Comics Journal arguably is the greatest resource, sort of oral history resource of, of the medium, inarguably, actually. Um, so hmm. we are transcribing old uh, interviews and putting them up as prose, and we're also having all the uh, issues scanned that are now available. Um, I think we're up to, like, issue 50. Two <laughs> or forty-six or something, yeah. uh, and those are available as to be paged through as, as images. So uh, the goal is to, is to really and there are one hell of a lot of interviews. That's a lot of interviews to, um, <laughs> to make it a you know a great resource. So uh, and with that, Gary, do you want to have the final word? Um, no, I mean I just I I, I just appreciate um, I mean I appreciate you guys um, being up here. Talking about the magazine, um, I think you're doing a great job on the website. I, I mean, I truly do. I wouldn't say that if I didn't think so. I mean, I appreciate what they're doing. Um, 
And I think we just want to make, make the website um, reflect 